Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to create a custom page navigation menu. I heard a lot on my Create Now tour that people wanted more Muse, more customization, more how-tos, and here we are. So let's go ahead and do it. So what I've got here is I've got just a regular long page here. It's um, just you know talking about music instruments. And I put in a few instruments and some descriptions, and of course I hadn't finished up for guitars and microphones, but uh, we don't actually need the actual text for this demo. It's really about the menu. Now, this is just one page, so there's no other page navigation menus. So if you were to use the widget library and you were to go to the menus and you were to drag out a horizontal menu, well, there's only one page, so it would just take you home. That's where you already are. So that menu is kind of useless on a one-page site. However, you can create a custom menu with any design you want, any elements you want, any graphics you want, any text you want, and just use hyperlinks to navigate your page. So we just have the one page site and what I'd love to do is create a menu that drops that that uh, jumps down to the various items. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the rectangle tool just as a design element. You don't need a rectangle for your menu, but just as a design element, I'm going to have this uh, have 100% uh, span of the entire page. So all I have to do is just make sure the rectangle touches the sides. It will turn red on the right side. And just to make sure I did it on the left side, I'll go ahead and do the same thing. Just make sure it touches and turns red. Once it does that, I know that will expand and contract to be the width of the page. Now, uh, rectangles by default are white with a black stroke. I don't want a stroke at all. And I don't want it to be white. I want to fill it with a different color. I can either pick one of the default swatches or just use my eyedropper and kind of eyeball or a color that I like. Now, if you know the um, values, you can go ahead and type those in as well. But I want something kind of in that family of color. All right, so now that I've got my uh, rectangle there, again, as just a visual element, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and type the name of my first menu item. Again, it's just going to be text. It could be a graphic. It could be whatever you want. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and create a text frame here. And we're going to just go ahead and type the word headphones, in case you didn't see that coming. Now, at this point, I can go ahead and finish styling it because I'm just going to duplicate it when I'm done. So at this point, I'm just going to change the font and I'm going to use one of my type kit fonts. Uh, I've got one here called Aramo, and I believe that's how you pronounce it, or Passion One, either one. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, choose the bold um, aspect of that font. Okay, so now I've got the font in place. I've got the... Um, text in place the next thing I need to do is a couple of things first of all if you want that to have like a rollover effect as people roll over it uh, we can add that as well so let's go ahead and do that while we're at it uh, I've got this here I'm just gonna uh, go to the text frame click normal because right now that's the normal state where we don't see a rectangle at all it's just clear and actually we can even say for the normal state that it has uh, no stroke around it just to be sure but anyway, for the um, rollover state, I'm going to go to the rollover state and just pick a slightly darker blue. Um, again, that's just so people will see it when it's rolled over. Now, we can also, uh, it will make that the um, mouse down state as well. But I'm going to go ahead and make an active state as well, and you'll see why in a minute. So let's go ahead and make an active state. And again, we can change it to be any color, anything we want, make it a different color, make it darker whatever we want. So I'm going to say that the active state, I'm really horrible at picking colors in case you haven't guessed. Uh, we'll say the active state is, oh God. Okay, we'll say the active state is that for now. All right, so and again, you'll design a better looking menu, I'm sure. All right, so there we have our um, headphones. It's basically got um, rollover states and an active state and a normal state of nothing. And now we need to actually, um, do one more thing. I'm going to actually control it with a scroll effect. What I want to happen is when the person scrolls down this page, either manually or using the menu, I want this item or these items at the top to keep going up. But then when it hits this bar, I want this bar to stay at the top of the screen. So that this navigation bar will always be at the top, no matter how far down they scroll. So to do that, we'll do it on the rectangle first. This will also give us our coordinates. We'll go to our scroll effects and we're just going to add a motion 
And notice that left and right are already dimmed because this is 100% width. So in other words, this can't move left to right, so they're, they're grayed out. So I want it to scroll up at the normal scroll rate of one. So in other words, as the person's scrolling up the page, that moves up the page too. But I want it to stop the final motion to have a motion of zero. And I want that motion of zero, and I'll show you where we're gonna put it, um, we're going to just basically grab the keyframe and we're just going to pull it right down to the top of the bar. So in other words, when it hits that spot, it stops scrolling, which is the top of the page. Now, we're, we need to do the same thing for all the menu items so they, they don't you know move separately. So we're just going to do the same thing here. We're going to add a scroll motion. Now, since this is not locked to the left and right, we have to change all the values here. Oh, and by the way, let's go back and look at that rectangle. It was 379 pixels, which is the top of it. So we want to do the same thing for this. So we're going to do a scroll up of one, left and right, zero, uh, 379, I believe is what I just said. Yep, 379, and final motion, zero, and final right motion, zero. Okay, so now that we've done all that work, we can go ahead and duplicate this item because it's got all the attributes we need for our next menu item. And I believe our next menu item is uh, violins. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, duplicate this by holding down your Option or Alt key and drag it over. And we'll make this one and we'll just double click on it now and we'll call this violins. Okay, same thing. Grab our pointer again or a selection tool. Hold down our Option and Alt key. I believe the next one is going to be keyboards. Okay, so we'll hold down our Option and Alt key. Drag this one over as well. And this one is going to be... Uh, double click on it and change it to keyboards and we're going to do the next one which I believe we're going to do guitars and microphones are the next two okay so guitars hold down our option alt key drag this over and we use smart guys to keep it aligned if you want but we're just going to use um, guitars and last but not least um, microphones so hold on our Option Alt key, duplicate it again, and this one's going to be called Microphones. Now I I I didn't use the smart guides to line those up really good, so I eyeballed it, and of course we want to kind of keep the space even, and that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the scroll effects for now. We're just going to pull this last one all the way over as far as we want it, and then we'll hold on our Shift key and grab all the ones in the middle. Okay, so now we got them all selected and we just use the alignment option and, uh, and distribute the objects based on their left edges. That way now they're all perfectly spaced apart. Okay, so that's it. We did our scroll effects. We did our, um, uh, we did our rollovers. We did all the things that we need except for actually making this a menu. It doesn't really do anything right now. So we're going to click on headphones and we want headphones when someone clicks on it to jump to the headphones area of the page. To do that, you use an anchor. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the anchor and then just go ahead and drop it down. Usually we want it a little bit higher because it's going to, you know, this bar is going to be in the way too. So we want to basically put it right about there. And we put our anchor in and we call it headphones. Okay, so then we scroll down the page and we put in an anchor for violins. Again, a little bit higher. There we go, violins. All right, and I think I did the remaining ones. Yep, I did keyboards already, and I did guitars and microphones already, so it's the same process. All right, so now we just click on headphones, and we say that that's going to be a hyperlink to headphones. Violins is going to be a hyperlink to violins, because the anchors you created will show up in the menu. Keyboards to keyboards, and guitars to guitars and microphones to microphones. All right, now if I did everything correctly, if we preview this in browser, which will generate the HTML for it and show us, as a, show it as, show us a preview, uh, there's our page. Here are our rollovers working perfectly. We can scroll down the page just to see how it works. It stops at the top and everything else keeps scrolling. And look, because of the active state, it knew when we got to headphones. It will know when we get to violins. It will know when we get to keyboards, guitars, and well, microphones is not going to scroll up any higher, but there we are. So if I want to jump to any other spot like violins, takes me right to violins, 
takes me right to headphones, takes me right down to guitars and microphones, which are still in the same view. But if we made this longer, then you can have that scroll as well. So there you are. We just created our own custom navigation that scrolls this page, even using scroll effects to control the top of it so that that bar stops right at the top of the page when the person keeps scrolling and makes our active states as well. This is, it's that easy, folks. Muse is really cool to do this kind of custom stuff the way you want it to be. All right, so that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White, and we'll catch you on the next one.